So there's a wide uh, range of materials that fit under this general heading, soft matter, which is the properties of materials that sort of exist between solid and liquid phase. Some of the areas that are probably most familiar to people include a lot of consumer products. So toothpaste, for example, is something that is relatively solid when it comes out of the tube, and yet when you push on it to brush your teeth, it very quickly forms a liquid. Food is another big class that we're all quite familiar with, where most of what we eat is somewhere between solids and liquids. For example, the folks who are trying to make low-fat products that have the same taste and mouthfeel as the full-fat products need to know a lot about the structure of the material on the microscopic scale and then how that structure affects these uh, characteristics that the consumer cares about. So we have a um, couple of major pieces of instrumentation. We have um, a high resolution microscope so we can look at the molecular structure of materials. Uh, and what's unique about our instrument is its ability to do three-dimensional representations with high resolution and at high speed. Uh, you take an image of the, the system you're interested in in a particular plane and then you move your plane of focus and take another image and move your plane of focus and take another image and then use the computer after the fact to build up a full three-dimensional representation of the object. Uh, a lot of the work involves biological materials. We're looking at things like mechanical properties of collagen, which is the, um, it's the most abundant molecule in our bodies uh, and is the sort of primary uh, constituent of, of, the, of the connective tissue, the things that, that, all, that holds us together. And so it's important to understand how it behaves when it misbehaves, either because of a disease or because of some genetic disorder. I'd like to understand why the changes in the molecular structure bring about the changes in the physical properties that, that cause us trouble and how we might go about uh, remedying that. And similarly, when looking for new classes of materials for implants, whether it's uh, implants for nerve regeneration or implants for artificial limbs, the technology has progressed tremendously over the last few decades, but there's a lot still to be done to improve our ability to uh, allow people to get the, the sort of function that we would like them to have.